Howdy, I'm Mark Fulton at the International Headquarters for Team Power Products. Uh, over the next few months, I'm going to be talking about a variety of different uh, subjects concerning the new technology of brushless motors and LiPo batteries. Um, I originally started in the 1980s uh, racing at RCRC, which was owned by Robert Jones at the time, who is now associated with RCDRL of Oklahoma. And with his help in this video, we'll try to talk about a lot of different things. If you see something that you like that you want me to talk about, please make comments about that. We'll see you at the next video. Okay. Now, after you see how I measure the rotor strength, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the, uh, more detail about how the rotor is sensed by the motor so that the your electronic speed control, your ESC, knows where the rotor is in the rotation of it. Uh, this is the end bell of a, in this case, this is an R3 motor. Um, the uh, structure is similar uh, to an R4. This is just a little bit different, but the basic uh, mechanism for the timing part of it is the same between the two motors. Um, when you look in here, you'll see that right in the middle of it you see the timing board which is right here and if you look in here a little closer that bright shiny spot in there that's the actual bearing that's where the end of the rotor goes in and uh, that's the end this is the other end of the motor not the shaft end where you attach your pinion this is the opposite end that we're talking about here and whoops Now I've pulled the timing board or the sensor board out of the back of the out of the back of the rotor, or at, sorry, out of the back of that housing I just showed here just a minute again. And remember, we talked about this is a two-pole motor, and that refers to the rotor itself. That is, it has two magnets in it; it's two-pole. But all these brushless motors actually have three individual phases as we as if you followed in my first video I showed you those three phases those three different windings well as I showed over there that each of those windings is controlled by one of these chips there's no the first chip let me get a little better focus here's the second one and then right over here on the other side that's the third one so those three chips on there correspond to the three coils inside the motor. This is how the uh, the ESC knows what's happening inside the motor. And now we're going to put the two together. I'm not going to have the housing. This makes it a lot easier to see. So now the rotor is actually inside the inside the bearing in the back. And I'm going, if you'll see on the rotor I've got marked, there's a black line. That's the middle of one of the magnets. And as you rotate this rotor, you'll see that there's one on the other side. Again, two pole. This is a two pole uh, motor, meaning there's two different magnets in the, in the rotor. So again, two pole. But if you look at the, where the mark is, I'm going to put this, I've got to take a look at it here because it's kind of tough for me to see. Um, there we go. I'm lining this black line up with one of the chips. Th that chip right there is one of the three chips that I showed that I pointed out just a few minutes ago that senses the magnetic field. So as this rotor rotates and as it gets close to those chips, just like this, it sends a, a signal back to the ESC. So, of course, this rotor is rotating at very high speeds. It comes by that chip, and as it passes, it's sending all kinds of information back to ESC. This is not like an on-off switch. As, the, as this black line, which is the magnet, approaches that black chip, the, that black chip is seeing a um, I don't want to get too technical, but it's a waveform is what they call it. It needs an oscilloscope to see that, but it, it, sends a, it, sends, it starts sensing that magnetic field as it comes around. But in essence, when it's lined up with that, that's the maximum signal uh, that is transmitted back to your speed control 
and of course then the speed control sends the power to the rest of the motor so that the rotor continues to rotate. This is, you know, there's a lot going on here that we don't, it's tough to see uh, that's in the motor and it's amazing that these swings work as well as they do and in essence uh, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of motor for for what we pay for, although at a hundred bucks a pop in general terms, most motors. Um, but back in the days we were paying 50 or 60 bucks back in the early 90s for a brushed motor which lasted about one fourth as long and back in the day that that price probably was at least double what we're paying for today. So you're getting motors that last twice as long for about a fourth the price nowadays. But in all, that's how all this stuff works. Uh, we'll be talking about some other items about motors in uh, future videos. Thanks for watching.